Welcome back to part three of my Foundry tutorials. Today we're going to look at the encounters. We won't get to the boss, but we will do uh, two encounters, which gives you the basics of what you have to do to um, add them. Uh, we have to add them in on the map that we're working on, which is the sewers. So as promised from the last video, so we do a quick run through. Here's where the player spawns. So let us uh, enter the map, make a run through to the other end. I'm going to go ahead and speed up the video so it doesn't take us as long to get to the other end. And while we're going along, I like to look at the map to see what I'm dealing with, if it's a pre-made map. I also spend some time to look to see uh, any potential places that would be good for archers, uh, melee characters, and traps. Here would be a good place for an archer. Another good place. You can see where the enemy would, or where we would come through. This place looks good for an encounter. This place looks like it'd be a good place to put some traps on the water, just in case the players drop down in there. Hallways, always a good place to put a patrol. Some wall or arrow traps in here would be great. And here's the spawn point we added in an earlier tutorial. Where it's dark here along the walls, place for a good trap. Here we are in the boss's room. And we'll put the boss fight right here in the center of the room right here. With our exit to the protector's enclave right here. I'm going to remove this door because I don't like it. Let's head back to the foundry editor. So I've gone ahead and deleted the door and you can see here that uh, we have a warning so we need to select a new door and put it in our map for the transition from the sewers back to the protector's enclave. So we go to our maps. So at this point we only have two details in our maps, our spawn point and our respawn point for uh, the boss's fight. So let us scroll into the area where we're going to put our exit door. Grab a door using the filter. We'll grab this small crypt door, drag it into place. Play the map from here to position a door in 3D mode. We can see the door over here sticking out of the ground. So we'll enter the 3D mode by control tab using the handles, move it up and position it back in place. Once 
When I position objects, I spend a little time and a little extra effort to ensure that everything looks right, it's symmetrical, there's no gaps. As you can see, I'm doing here, running back and forth. I even look up where the door meets the wall on the inside. And then I look down at the bottom, see is it all the way around the same width? If not, then I try to adjust it. Perfect. Okay, let's head back into the Foundry tool set. Now we need to set the transition from the sewers to the protector's enclave. So we'll do that now. And you see here I did not rename the door, which I'll do here. There we go. So at this point we're ready to start adding the encounters. I'm going to just do a couple, show you how to set up a patrol, and then you can fill in the rest of the details on your own. Let's head back to the beginning of the sewers and start from there. Select encounters. There's uh, many different types of encounters that you can have with different creatures. As you can see from the list here, uh, there's three difficulty levels, easy, standard, and hard. And there's melee, ranged, and a mix of both. So depending on your situation and what you'd like to uh, have for your particular maps, uh, you, there's plenty here to choose from. Me, I'm going to get rid of this filter and select spider because there's spiders in sewers, we know that. Just going to pick an easy encounter and mixed. So if you click on them, you can see here it gives you a short description of them. All right, this one's got five mobs in it. This one's got four. Okay, and they're both a mixture of uh, melee and ranged. So just drag that to your map and notice that we're in the layout view. In layout view it shows the whole encounter not each individual mob that's in detail that displays that information. Let's identify our encounter. Under behavior this is just a straight up uh, fight that we're having in this particular case but you can see there's other behaviors that you can have your encounter perform. In future tutorials we'll go through them each individually and set them up and show you how they work. Let's enter detail view. Scroll in to get a better view. They're all facing the opposite direction so let's go into layout view, turn them around so that they're facing the player. Back to detail view and you can move them around individually now to any position that you would like them to be in when they first spawn. Let's go ahead and play the map to see what they look like. Control R to reset the map. And there is the five spiders that we placed. And you can see they're more or less in the position that I put them in when I was moving them around individually. Let's head back to the foundry. Let's talk about individual naming of, of the mobs. Uh, the first one is their name, so uh, let's say this was Spock, Mr. Spock, we'll call it Mr. Spider, and then the group name as a whole that they belong to. In this particular case, we'll just call it a spider group. Um, and then in brackets, we'll, uh, uh, we'll just put the spider group.
just so you can see the difference. Let's play the map. Control R and reset the map. Here you can see the group name is on top in small letters and the actual name of the mob is in uh, larger letters underneath the group name. In this particular case, Mr. Spider. Back to the Foundry tool. Let's go ahead and get rid of the group name and the name. I prefer their default for this particular case. Let's continue on and add a patrol for that hallway. I think we'll select uh, Easy and Rebel. It has three mobs for this encounter and based on the level of the player it'll show one, two, or three mobs for difficulty scaling. Drag and drop the encounter to your map. Rotate it around so it faces the player. Position it in the location that you want it. And we'll set this to a looping patrol. Once you select the behavior as looping patrol, one patrol point is added and you have to add the rest either before or after the one that you have highlighted. We'll add three before. We'll need four in total, but we'll just add three for now. Move each individual patrol point out to the locations for the patrol. We need one more patrol point. We'll add it after. Remembering that this patrol is a loop, so we'll need four points. And move and adjust your patrol points around. The last thing you want is your patrol to get stuck on the walls or objects on the floor. And then when you position them, make sure that you run through it to make sure that they're not getting hung up on anything. Save it off. Now let's reposition the individual mobs in this encounter. and give them a name and a group name. With some of the other behaviors, there's um, parameters that you can set for the actual behavior. In this particular case, there's no parameters need, that need to be set. So we'll just continue on. Well, we are way past our 10 minute mark for this video. So what we'll do here, we'll just have a look at the actual patrol and see how it looks once we've uh, adjusted it. Let's go ahead and play the map. And there's our patrol. Now as you can see, it looks like he's hung up on the wall. That's why you have to come in and play um, to ensure that things are working smoothly once you make those adjustments. Then you do any final adjustments to ensure that the mobs are not sticking on the environment. Everything seems to be working fine now. Notice that there's only two here instead of three. In this tutorial, we had changed the exit door to the Protector's Enclave, just because I didn't care for the previous selection. We reassigned that door on our map transition as an exit from the boss's room to the Protector's Enclave. We added spiders in a normal encounter and added this patrol. There are quite a few of other behaviors 
Each could be a separate video unto itself. I will go ahead and add more encounters and when we return I will discuss how I added them. We will spend some time adding details to the environment to provide to the player a better immersion. That's all for now and thank you for joining us here today. Don't forget to like my videos to show your support and appreciation for my hard work for you. Cheers.